let's take a look at this episode. We left off with the three volunteers from the plant. They have offered to try to open this slush gate. Slush gate. I kind of know what they're trying to say, but I can't say it myself. <laughs> and we left off with uh, all three flashlights going dead, which makes me think that the radiation is eating the battery life. Um, they're now in the dark in the maze of tunnels that are covered in radiated water. And my thinking is they don't make it to the gates, but I don't remember an explosion actually happening uh, that they were describing could happen when everything meets. So let's see what ends up happening. And this one is called Open Wide O Earth. So maybe the two megaton to four megaton explosion does happen. Snap, crackle, pop. I don't know if you guys could hear that since I've got the mic on, on this on. Make sure everything's recording correctly. So far, my mic is staying on. So we're picking up where we left off. Does radiation affect um, the magnet field and all that? Because it sounds like they've got the crank style flashlights. Sounds like they're trying to get the charge going. I have a radio that works that way that we would take camping just in case we needed it. Still trying to find her husband. She's going to hug him. So is he still lying? Burns them alive. <laughs> I'd say it's been way past 30 minutes. And they've got gloves and masks on. I can't handle when other people cry. First smart thing he said. How are 400 men supposed to fit in that tunnel? Or is it so they can work in shifts fast? So 50 degrees Celsius, I'm assuming, which would mean 100 degrees Celsius is 200 degree, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So half of that would be 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Am I calculating that correctly? I don't know if you heard that. That was a jet. We had eight fly over yesterday. 
just wanted to add to the ambiance of the show. There's the second one. They usually go in twos. Had a group of four last night. There's a third. Let's see if a fourth goes by. Sometimes the jets are so close you can see the pilot in the cockpit. And they're flying that low. Here's the fourth. That one sounded further away. I don't know if you guys could hear that one. All right, back to this. She does not listen. She is pregnant. And now she's exposed the baby to all this radiation that's been coming off of him. Oh, they're working naked because it's so hot. Got to do what you got to do. It almost seems like they're trying to indicate that there was a sabotage. <laughs> so they've got scripts that they have to tell everybody. Are those the volunteers? Inside lead coffins? Yeah. And burying concrete. Are they going to end at this spot? What are you doing? So that was the end of the third episode. We're starting to get into some of the government control aspect of it all. And even those in the government are being controlled by others. And the paranoia about what you say and all that kind of stuff. I was trying to think if there is much else to comment on. The other thing I don't know is how much of this is accurate. I know docu-series, they're not always 100% accurate. What I know from what I've heard about the USSR and the KGB and all that is that they are very controlling, uh, they do spy on everybody, uh, they do take folks into custody when it disagrees with what they're wanting out there, all that kind of stuff. Now, I know that nowadays, I was trying to think is if it's that the KGB doesn't exist, in quotes, <laughs> or if... Um, if it's supposed to have been changed or something like that. I know that things aren't supposed to be the same, but if you pay attention to the news, there's still a lot of control and disinformation and not allowing certain information out, all that kind of stuff. If you look at just the LGBT community kind of stuff, 
I mean, Vladimir says that uh, it's not allowed or something like that. So they either have to leave, live in secrecy or take the chance on being arrested for being gay. I was trying to think of the name of the girl group. I can't remember if they are musicians that are very vocal or uh, something else, but it's three women who get in trouble a lot. Cannot remember the name of them. Is it something Pussy Riot? They're about women's rights and LGBT rights and all that kind of stuff. And they've been arrested multiple times for protesting and speaking out. Oh, I can't think of their names. It's been a few years since I've seen anything about them. Russia, not the USSR, but Russia is still very controlling and only allows certain information out and that sort of thing. And like they said in, I can't remember if it was this episode or the previous episode, the the reason that Russia admitted to Chernobyl so quickly was only because Sweden and the U.S., found out about things. Otherwise, I think it's assumed that Russia still wouldn't have copped to it. They still wouldn't have evacuated folks. At least that's the kind of tone that you get from what we're being shown here. Let's take a look at things a second here. (laughs) Got to move poor Purdy. She's not happy. She was comfortable. She was laying on her back. Fixing my pants. Okay. Let's take a look. I know that it's not the end all be all, but let's look up. Let's look up information. Okay. So on IMDb, like I said, I understand that not all of this is true necessarily. They started filming this in May of 2018, so 32 years later, did I calculate that correctly? They started filming it 32 years later. So the power plant that they used is um, a decommissioned nuclear power station that uh, was considered Chernobyl's sister because of how similar it looked. So the music that was composed for the show was developed using the sounds um, at that power plant. The Russian Minister of Culture, Vladimir Medinsky, offered high praise for the series, saying it was done masterfully and with respect for the Soviet people. Medinsky's own father served as a liquidator. It does acknowledge that some ultra ultra-nationalists took issue with the miniseries. At around 1,400, Soviet authorities initially ordered a temporary three-day evacuation <clears throat> just three hours in advance and advised residents to pack only their vital personal belongings. Believing they would be returning shortly, the city was essentially abandoned in place. During the cleanup operation, most of the furniture, cars, and other belongings were illegally looted and removed from the exclusion zone. Such illegal looting has since continued. Former Soviet General Nikolai Tarakanov took issue with a few small details but otherwise praised the series and its depiction of the events and stated it was portrayed accurately. He was 85 in 2019, uh, suffers from chronic disease related to radiation exposure from his time in Chernobyl. Jojo's talking. Astonishingly, the three remaining reactors at Chernobyl remained operational and manned after the 1986 explosion of reactor number four. Chernobyl reactor number two was shut down after a fire in 1991. Reactor number one was shut down in 1996 after pressure from foreign governments, and reactor number three was closed in 2000. 
the decommissioning process whereby the facility is dismantled to the point that it no longer requires radiation protection is ongoing as of 2019. An accurate number of deaths caused by Chernobyl in the years following the disaster will never be known as a 1988 decree from the Kremlin prevented doctors from citing radiation as a cause of death or illness. On screen, the actors speak English in their natural accents. However, all speech that is heard through artificial means is in Russian. So the terminal that was showing the calls coming in, the radio, that kind of stuff, all dialogue is in Russian if it is heard through the radio, emergency telephone call recording, Soviet television news. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Make sure you can hear me still. Yep. Okay. Back to this. A Ukrainian woman who lived during... Uh, this is miswritten, who lived during the Soviet era, analyzed each script to ensure dialogue and small details were accurate to the time period. Creator writer Craig Mazin had been unaware that Comrade was really used so extensively as a style of address. While the majority of the lead characters portrayed real people, Ulana Komyak I think is how it said, was an amalgam, amalgam who represented the dozens of Soviet scientists who worked to solve and investigate the Chernobyl disaster and was written to honor their dedication and service to truth and humanity. I think we saw most of what I was looking for. So my other question was about how many nuclear reactors we have in the U.S. Because the only one I know about is uh, Three Mile Island. And I don't know if that's because it's probably, I, it looks like there might be more closer to me. Oh, there's more than that. I don't know why Three Mile Island is, <laughs> excuse me, the only one I was thinking of. In fact... Looks like Charlotte, excuse me, Charlotte, and then can't tell if that's Raleigh or just above Raleigh has one. Let me share this. Make sure I'm not blocking me. So this is a map showing U.S. operating commercial nuclear power reactors and North Carolina looks like six seven looks like North Carolina possibly has seven units five or seven looks like Wilmington has two near it can I zoom in Nope. It seems like the majority of them are East Coast. We have a couple in the Midwest. Um, and then three, five, six out on the West Coast. Seems like from the middle of Texas out on, there's hardly any. So, with us having so many, that also makes me wonder, that also makes me wonder, what are our protocols to avoid what happened in Chernobyl? Looks like the EPA has information. Uh, Phys.org, I imagine that stands for physicist. The less, 10 Lessons from Chernobyl and Fukushima. The NRC, which is the nuclear reactor. Uh, what does it stand for? I can't remember. Nuclear Regulatory Commission has information. On April 26, 1986, a sudden surge of power during a reactor 
systems test destroyed unit for the nuclear power station at Chernobyl um, in the former Soviet Union. The accident and the fire that followed released massive amounts of radioactive material into the environment. Emergency crews responding to the accident used helicopters to pour sand and boron on the reactor debris. The sand was to stop the fire and additional releases of radioactive material. The boron was to prevent additional nuclear reactions. A few weeks after the accident, the crews completely covered the damaged unit in a temporary concrete structure called the sarcophagus to limit further release of radioactive material. The Soviet government also cut down and buried about a square mile of pine forest near the plant to reduce radioactive contamination at the at and near the site. Chernobyl's three other reactors were subsequently restarted, but all eventually shut down for good with the last reactor closing in 99. The Soviet nuclear power authorities presented their initial accident report to an International Atomic Energy Agency meeting in Vienna, Austria in August of 86, so just a few months later. After the accident, officials closed off the area within 30 kilometers or 18 miles. For those of us that are not aware of how to convert, I admit I'm not good about that. Except for persons with official business at the plant and those people evaluating and dealing with the consequences of the accident and operating the undamaged reactors. The Soviet and later on Russian government evacuated about 115,000 people from the most heavily contaminated areas in 1986 and another 220,000 people in subsequent years. Although you've got to wonder how much damage had already been done to them if it's years later that they're moving them. And it goes into some of the health effects, U.S. reactors and their response. Um, the NRC continues to conclude that many factors protect U.S. reactors against the combination of lapses that led to the accident at Chernobyl. Differences in plant design, broader safe shutdown capabilities, strong structures to hold in radioactive materials, all help to ensure U.S. reactors can help keep the public safe. When the NRC reviews new information, it takes into account possible major accidents. These reviews consider whether safety requirements should be enhanced to ensure ongoing protection of the public and the environment. And then it goes on uh, into some more stuff. <sighs> Honestly, it doesn't make me feel any better. <clears throat> I, I know there's pros and cons with nuclear energy, and I don't know if I'm saying the word correctly. I know that's uh, for all the grammar Nazis out there. <laughs> nuclear and nuclear, I think are the two different ways to say it. And folks will get on to you about the correct way to say it. And I will admit to you, I don't know the correct way. Because there's a difference between the nuclear family and the nuclear reactor. But I don't know what the difference is. <laughs> So, since my headphones are pitching a fit, uh, just to wrap this up, it makes me curious as, as to how the next two episodes are going to handle things, because at the very beginning of the series, um, it was two years after all of this that he hung himself, uh, the professor, uh, not professor, the scientist. Uh, I, think they, I think they do refer to him as professor. So I, I do wonder what all the next two episodes are going to cover. They did talk about the containment unit uh, that was mentioned in that article. Cat fur. Um, they do mention um, turning over the land and all that kind of stuff, burying the land. So they mentioned that in the series. Are they actually going to show it or are they just going to verbally report on it kind of stuff? Um, so we'll have to see, seeing the men with the radiation burns basically being burned alive is what was happening to them, is just um, horrific. I wish rather than yelling at the wife, you know, it's not safe, I wish they would have explained. Educating does a lot of helping people understand why you're saying this, why they didn't say 
the radiation can come off of him onto you. That's why we're all in gear, you know, all this kind of stuff. We need to know if you're pregnant because it can cause birth defects with the baby. You know, if, if they would have educated, and I know it seems like they're in a hurry, but they wasted more time yelling at her than they would have if they would have just explained it. And so I, I, I'm curious if, if they're going to show us the progression with the wife um, and how it's affected her. Because we've been concentrating on it so much, I'm assuming we're going to go there and show some of the aftermath in that respect. I don't know. I've been talking a lot, um, so we're going to end it here. Thank you for joining me on this one. I'll see you guys on episode four, and we'll continue our discussions. Bye.